Buck on your mark. You got down at three, <laughs> two, one. <laughs> T minus five by the center. We're in a lot of sequence here now. Controlling the countdown. Over a thousand parameters will be checked out between now and T minus 31 seconds. One bad thing about it. What you gonna do? Look at it? Okay. Matt and Craig's kind of a big guy. Huh? Craig's kind of a big guy anyway. Oh, all right. <laughs> he was getting up on here? Oh, is that what he was? Okay. I got this. I don't know. I was going to get it. I was going to get it. I need the final pre-launch. Store the command. Sorry. The board. The pilot is being directed to activate switches to connect the fuel cell essential buses. Next activity. Okay. Now it's our time to fly. Have a good one. And <laughs> activity will be to retract the order access arm.
what is four months.
minute, 10 seconds out of the flight. The three liquid fueled engines are back at full throttle. At liftoff, the fully fueled shuttle boosters and external tank weighed four and a half million pounds. It now has burned half that liftoff weight in propellant. One minute, 30 seconds, all hydraulic systems in good shape. The electricity producing fuel cells also in excellent shape as Atlantis heads downrange 18 miles from the Kennedy Space Center at an altitude of 18 miles. The next event is burnout and separation of the twin solid rocket boosters, which are burning propellant at a rate of 11,000 pounds per second. SRB separation is confirmed two minutes, 15 seconds into the flight. Atlantis is traveling 3,000 miles per hour downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, 46 miles, altitude 35 miles. Mission of the twin orbital maneuvering system engines on the tail of the orbiter providing an additional boost toward ascent and heading off toward the International Space Station. minutes 45 seconds into the flight. in Spain in the event of a single engine failure. However, all three engines are continuing to perform as expected. Hydraulic systems in excellent shape, as are the fuel cells producing the electricity for the vehicle. Three minutes, 20 seconds into the flight. Atlantis is 97 miles downrange at an altitude of 51 miles, traveling 6,000 miles per hour. Views from the external tank uh, camera looking down the vehicle. Very quiet here in Mission Control as the flight control team continues to watch over all systems. Everything uh, continuing to go very smoothly with Atlantis' voyage to the International Space Station. Three minutes, 50 seconds into the flight. Atlantis, negative return. Yeah, Couldn't ask for better lighting conditions. Roger, negative return. Yeah, pretty good. Atlantis can no longer return to the Kennedy Space Center in the event of an engine failure, but all three are continuing to perform well, as are the hydraulic systems and the electricity producing fuel cells. Four minutes, 20 seconds into the flight. Atlantis is 175 miles downrange from the launch site at an altitude of 62 miles, now traveling 8,000 miles per hour. system engines continue to provide an additional boost to Atlantis as it heads toward the International Space Station. That helps assist uh, should wrap up in the next uh, 15 seconds or so. All continue to go very smoothly with Atlantis's trip to the International Space Station. On board, uh, Rick Sterko in the forward left seat. Lee Archibald in the uh, forward right seat. Pat Forrest to the flight engineer between them. Yeah. Steve Swanson serving as mission specialist number one, or number two. Clay Anderson on his way to the International Space Station to replace Sonny Williams. Atlantis, crash to ATO. Five minutes, 30 seconds into the flight. Atlantis can reach orbit on two engines now, should one fail. However, all three are still performing as planned. Atlantis, single engine Ops 3. Copy, single engine Ops 3. Yeah. Cool. Five minutes, 55 seconds into the flight. Atlantis beginning to roll to a heads-up position, the onboard guidance system putting Atlantis on our trajectory toward the International Space Station. 